Hello again, this is Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher. Welcome back to my machine shop. And this is tips number 868, part 1 of a two-part video. So make sure you watch both parts. Hopefully you have watched a two-part video that I made recently where I fabricated and showed you how to make one of these quick quill stops for the Bridgeport Mill. And these are really handy. Actually, it's great. The only thing is you do not have a whole lot of adjustment. In other words, you can only move this from one thread to the other, which would be 50 thousandths for each thread that you move. Sometimes you want to get a little bit more accurate than that and not have to crank the knee. So here is another type of quill stop, and I've already made a prototype of this and it's a, also a rapid acting one with a push button here to allow you to slide it up and down. Oops, I just lost my thread. There will be graduations along here that I may make in part three if there is a part three if anyone's interested in that. Otherwise I won't even bother with the graduation because you've seen me do that in lots of other videos. Just in case you have not seen the video where I fabricate this little quill stop, here is the names of those two videos right now. And I'll put links in the description. Okay, let me explain what I'm doing here now. I'm over at the Bridgeport Mill with the J head, and this is the quill stop. And the purpose of it, of course, is to limit how deep you are drilling or boring or milling or whatever the operation may be. And the problem with this, if you will agree with me, is that this is 20 threads per inch if you have the American model. Now you may have a clone that has a metric screw here, so you'll have to redesign it if that is the case. And the problem here with this 20 threads per inch, half 20, is that it takes 100 turns, like this, to move it the full 5 inches here. And that's almost an unreasonable thing to ask people to do. You can see how long this takes. So most people use a quill stop such as this. That's a commercially made one. Put that in place and that is your depth stop and I hope again that you watch the video where I made this one and it does the exact same thing. If you don't feel like making one, buy one for $15 and it works like that. The problem with this again is that you can only move it every thread. And if you want a little more accuracy than that, you will need to make one of these, which is what I'm going to talk about right now. I made several prototypes, and this is one of them. And again, there is a push button here that allows you to move very rapidly from one end to the other. This is three parts. There's the outer body, the nut, and a spring. This one's made out of steel. You can make it out of aluminum which is what I did for one of my prototypes. So when we install this at the end of the last video, this will be removed and this will be installed. So that is what we're making. It is admittedly kind of tricky and kind of difficult. You can do it. Now I have no plans, no drawings for this. Matter of fact, I just took the dimensions off of this and I guesstimated some of the dimensions from pictures that I saw in catalogs. So they do make one of these commercially. I think they're 50 or $60. And if you do make one of these, you're going to think 50 or $60 is a bargain. Believe me. Now you can make this out of steel. This is inch and a half diameter steel. This is inch and a half aluminum and I did make my prototypes out of aluminum. I think you're better off with your final product to be made out of steel. But here's the first one I make. And I have to work my way through a project like this with prototypes. There is no drawings as I said a little bit earlier. Inch and a half aluminum and this nut. I'm going to call this the nut or the half nut is 5 8 stock. So we got a 5 8 hole, blind hole. I went a little bit too deep. Don't do that, but at least this was on my prototype, so it doesn't matter. 
and we simply put a spring in here, a compression spring, and you have to experiment with the length and the size of the spring and put the nut in like this, the half nut, and then where's my bolt here? This is a commercially made half 20 bolt. And to get it out, push the button, the magic button. Pretty neat, right? So that's my first one. So we'll have to drill and tap a hole and then elongate it. Not too difficult to make. And this is the part that we're going to make in this video. And in the second part of the video, I'll be making the main body part of it. So two separate videos. Let's get started. Notice the nice crown or radius that I have right here. How am I going to do that? That's a tough one. So next I made prototype number two and it has the knurl. It's pretty much a finished one as you can see to help me establish dimensions. This is just a concept. This is a working prototype out of aluminum. So after making this I committed myself to steel. So here's one. Look at that nice knurl. I hope you can do that well. And I have several, that is two, videos on how to knurl. Not always easy to get a real nice knurl like that, but we'll talk more about that in part two. Again here by pushing the magic button, the thread will slide right out very quickly. And this isn't much different than what I just showed you. There's a spring in here. Set that aside. Hope I don't lose it. So this is the part we're going to make right now in this video. Again, 5H stock. And we're going to start with a piece that's a little bit longer. Like this is a foot long. Try to use screw machine stock or free machining if you can. And this is a finished one that is ready to use other than the radius right here. But you can see the thread on half of it and the elongated hole and then it's to be cut off about where my thumb is to in other words to be determined later on. And you might as well make two of them one on each end while you're at it. That's what I usually do as long as you got you're making these difficult setups on the machine that you don't want to have to do twice, so that's why I make two of almost everything that I do. Okay, this is 5H stock, as you can see, just a little bit under, doesn't really matter. A few thousands one way or the other, and the distance right here is about 110 thousandths, a little bit over, and I'll trim that to length later on. For now, I'll be drilling the hole a little bit further inboard than that. And again, I have to find the center here, so I'll show you how to do that with the center finder. We've done that a lot of times. Locate the hole, pilot, quarter inch, and then 29 64 and then we'll tap it one half 20 on the machine, on the milling machine. You cannot do this on a drill press. This really has to be done on a vertical milling machine. So now let's go over and actually make some chips. Be sure and wear your safety glasses and observe all the safety rules that I harangue on constantly. So the work is in the vise setting on a one and a half inch parallel about three quarters of an inch sticking out simply so I can put the edge finder on it and the diameter of the edge finder is two hundred thousandths so that makes the radius one hundred and the radius of the stock is 312. So once I locate the edge, I'll be moving in 412 thousandths. I will be watching the digital readout. You cannot see that. And 412 thousandths. Perfect, and I have locked the table in the y-axis. And now I will find the edge on the end and move in 500 thousandths. And 
And now I am ready to drill and tap. Again, this was 500 thousandths in. That's not important at all because that will be trimmed later on. I do not know what that distance is to be right now. So that's why I'm in at 500 thousandths and I'm ready. And now a quarter inch pilot all the way through. And now I will drill 2964 which is the tap drill size for one half twenty. Now I will tap one half twenty all the way through. Remember that this tap, which has a hardened shank, is being held in a Jacobs chuck, so it is liable to slip. I am in back gears at slow speed and be sure and use tapping fluid or some kind of lubricant like this. Let's go. Be sure and do your tapping on the machine like this so that the hole is tapped perfectly straight. It will bind, it will not work if you have a crooked hole. Now the whole principle of this thing is to offset that hole by 110 thousandths. How did I arrive at that? By baguette and bagosh. And I made a bunch of these because I had again no drawing. I did all the work for you. So looking at the digital readout, I will be moving 110 thousandths. That's 110 thousandths and I am locking the table in the X axis and I'm ready to mill and I'm simply going to plunge cut. As I remember from my sample here, I do not even have to move it back and forth. But we'll double check that with the thread when ready. This is a one half inch end mill. I'm not sure if I said that and I have already put some oil on it. Let's plunge. Okay, let's see if it works. As you can see, the bolt slides freely, and then I can engage it with the thread. So 110,000 seems to be just the correct dimension. Now it's ready to take out and cut off, and then later on trim in part two. Okay, the dimension right here is 100 thousandths, so I'm going to put this in the lathe and uh, hit it with a file to knock that burr off the back side and I will mark this at 100 thousandths and face it off and you know it's kind of silly I should have laid it out correctly so I don't need to do this when I drilled the hole but since I didn't I will face and cut it off right now Now I'm sure some of you are going to say that the wall is very thin here and this is extremely weak and it's going to break or bend or whatever. Now this is 5 8 stock. If you want to make it larger like 3 quarter you can but I think that anything larger than 5 8 like this is going to be out of proportion or present problems here in regards to the graduations and the neural. But you can do whatever you would like if you're going to make one of these. So at this point I have measured this and it's about one and one eighth long but I'm cutting off here at one and three sixteenths and I will just leave it rough cut until part two when I put the radius on here. So you can look forward to how I do that because that's something that isn't really 
two weeks. Well, it's easy to do if you follow my method, but maybe not. I don't know. Be right back after I cut this off. Okay, here it is, rough installed. And you can see that I got plenty of material here to face it and put the radius on. The spring is installed here in my original prototype. And it works fine. So there it is. And of course I've got a spare here. Should I lose it? And I'm very prone to lose things, as you well know. So that concludes part one of this several part video. Hope you enjoyed it. Do me a big favor, will you? Subscribe and like and a thumbs up and hit the bell and all of that stuff. That would help me a lot and it doesn't cost you a dime. Alright, that's the end of this video and I'll see you in part two, I hope. So long for now.